Here's, here's the box, the teenage box. And as a lot of you, and possibly my, I, I do not know, I can't remember that I completely emptied it. I didn't know how important it was to empty the box. And I suppose a lot of you didn't know how important it was to empty the box either. And you didn't take everything out of the teenage box and really throw it over and see it, that it was empty before you came over here and started taking out the good things for, for the, from the adult box. Don't rush the washing machine cycle, Dr. Heil says. Don't rush the cycle. You know what happens if you rush the cycle. It, not, no part of it gets done well. No part of the wash gets done well. No part of our lives gets done well if we don't take out everything from the box we're just leaving. And then people, even after you take out everything, for instance, you get married before you, have, you get your uh, high school diploma. And some of you possibly did. And you're not so terribly bad off. Maybe you took the GED and so forth. But you, uh, maybe you possibly didn't take everything, all the education, all the training, all the spiritual training. And you jumped over here into marriage, which is a wonderful thing, but it's an adult thing. And you got over here and took marriage and then all of a sudden realized you had more responsibilities than you knew how to handle. Because you didn't stay over here and learn typing and learn skills that would help you to be able to enjoy things in the adult box. Help your teenager to get everything she's supposed to get out of the teenage box. Teenagers, you who are here, enjoy the period of trying your hair different ways. After you have two little kids pulling at your skirt and another one in your arms, you just don't have the time to try your hair different ways. You know, we shouldn't get upset with the teenagers, you know, fixing their hair this way and that way and look, you know, they're have, they're, that's their time to enjoy seeing what their hair lo looks like different ways. I'm glad to see a young girl enjoying fixing herself up to look like a lady. And they enjoy makeup, hopefully natural makeup, you know, and not too, uh, you know, like you don't have, like, not like you have two bruised eyes or something, you know, but as, na as natural as possible. And they need to experiment with it to see how to use it as natural as possible. And the fact that they like it is just, th that's, they're supposed to like it. And so they're, 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 they're learning about colors, and they like this color study, color me beautiful, and that type of thing. And I love to think. That instead of saying, no, don't wear that, no, don't do this, no, do that, then we can say, yes, honey, look, see what colors look best on you. Why don't we get excited about things teenagers like? Get excited when they say, oh, look, Mom, look at that car. And we go, oh, it, it, it's not big enough for you and your purse. Uh, in, instead of doing that, putting it down, say, that is, that is pretty snazzy car, isn't it? Is that wrong? Is it wrong? I think what we think as mothers is, if I say that's a snazzy car, she'll be getting one, and then I just know one night she's not going to come in. When she doesn't come in, she's going to get killed, and I'm going to lose my daughter. I mean, you know, our minds just go so wild that we, and, 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 and or, or your daughter says, Mom, isn't he a cute boy? And you say, I bet he wouldn't even be able to put shoes on your kids if you married him. She wasn't asking, could she marry him? She was just saying, isn't it a cute boy? Isn't he a cute boy? Would it be so bad for us to enter in and enjoy some of the things they enjoy and say, yeah, yeah, he is cute. Boy, you know how to pick him, don't you? You know, why do we have to act so bad about everything that the teenager likes? Teenagers are, their minds are full of boys, some of them cars, clothes, makeup, hair. You know, they're full of that. Why don't we take those things and enjoy it with them? And even get into Proverbs 31 and pull out the purple and the tapestry and the silk and really make a lesson out of it. And then go to a verse where it talks about the ointments and, and get, let them have the samples of perfume. Oh, come away from that, honey. That's too. They get to where they think, I'd better, I guess, jump over here. And then we're not happy when they do that either. We're very unhappy. We're too, you're marrying too soon. You don't even know him. You don't do that. But we weren't happy over here. The kids don't know what we want. They're confused. We don't even know what we want ourselves for them. And so, of course, they're confused. Let them enjoy all the fun of being a teenager and being silly. Oh, honey, don't giggle so much. It, it, and it, I just get so tired of that giggling. Oh, boy, when they're giggling, they, when they're giggling and they're in your home giggling, you know where they are. And you know what they're giggling about, probably, or at least have some idea of what they're giggling about. 
You know, don't uh, you may get tired of their giggling. But, you know, I'd like to see some of those adolescents pull some of that giggle over into here in adulthood where they don't go, oh, I've got this to do and that to do and the other thing to do, you know, and, and bring their giggle with them. Uh, our preacher talks about the fact that a balanced person doesn't leave their childhood. Now, I, he didn't say the box, but I'm making it a box. You don't leave all of your childhood. You should uh, enjoy all the childhood your kid can. If your, kid, if your girl sits up in a tree, is that so bad? A lot of ladylike adults sat up in a tree when they were younger. You know, oh, you say, oh, she's just a tomboy. I just don't know why. I should, uh, we're making little miniature adult uh, little girls, you know, and they're supposed to sit like this, and they never get a chance to have childhood. Let them go ahead and have childhood and enjoy themselves. And you can be teaching them along as you go along, and, and, and then let them and ad try to get them to take some of childhood into adolescence. Some of the good things of childhood. Now, people, aren't we over here in adulthood? Don't we? Aren't we pretty childish sometimes? We get mad at our husbands and we slam that door. And he knows by that that you just upset me. And you better know it too. You know, and if he says, what I do? You say, nothing. <laughs> and he's supposed to know that he's supposed to work with you until he can get it out of you. And then it'll take about 30 minutes until you finally say it. So, you, you know, and, and, and boy, you, you, we're real childish. We're not going over there, are we? I'm not going. That, uh, so we take our childishness from over here. Why don't we instead take our childlikeness over here? And our childlikeness might be saying, oh, wow, isn't this fun? You know, like a little kid does. I love to see an adult who still enjoys things. Instead of your take, you taking someplace or you take them someplace and they say, uh, we saw that. You know, I've been around the world seven times on the back of a turtle slowly. <laughs> and I, I've, I've already seen, I've already seen this and that and the other. I love to take somebody, my brother-in-law, my husband says my brother-in-law. He, he said, I'd, I'd like to take him to the city dump. He'd get excited going to the city dump. Jerry Smith, he works at House Anderson College. He, he just gets excited about life. He enjoys life. And, and, and uh, some people might say, well, he's, you know, a little childlike. Is being childlike, is that something we should leave back over there? And yet, let's empty uh, all the child, the chi some people have never had a childhood. Let's help them empty all that they can get out of the box called childhood. And then empty all they can get out of the box adolescence. And let that adolescent's time go to where I, uh, they can go on through college, through 24 years of age, if, you know, if, if they can. And don't start in with, honey, aren't you ever going to get married? Aren't you? Yeah. They can be married for the rest of their life, folks. And, uh, boy, I'd hate to push somebody into a marriage and, it, and then it be a wrong marriage. But we're always pushing everybody out, out of whatever it is. Just like we even push them out of the box called grief. Hurry up, come out of it. You, you've already been there 30 days. Come on, come on, hurry up. And they never do go get through the grieving period because people force them out, uh, from getting everything they're supposed to get out of grief. Yes, we're supposed to get things out of grief. We're supposed to pull lessons out of that. I'm supposed to pull lessons out of sickness. We're all, I want to get, every, if I have to go through it, I want to get everything I can get out of it. Uh, every good thing I can get out of it. Some of you, your husband's possibly left you. Uh, get everything you can out of that. It's, uh, it, the, don't, don't, just, don't just let the bad cave in on you. Get the good. Now, what can I learn from that that will help me to help someone else? Or what can I learn from what happened to make me a better person? Get everything you can out of whatever stage you're going through, whether, uh, whatever age group, uh, by age or by what's happened to you. John 10.10 10 says, Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He means for us to have the abundant life. A a not just have salvation, but have an exciting, thrilling life. Uh, now, your peers, and people, we all have peers. Uh, not just adolescents, not just high school people, not just teenagers. We ladies have peers, and we say, oh, these kids, they just let peer pressure come in on them too much. What about us when we say, uh, what are you going to wear to the meeting? Oh, I can't go then. I don't have that type of outfit. 
instead of being adult enough to say, I'm, I, this is what I feel comfortable wearing, and I know there'll be people there in all types of dress, but this is what I'm going to wear. Or, will you go in with me? I can't go into a room alone. I don't know what people will all look at me. And then we say to our kids, oh, get over it. It's just peer pressure. Don't we compare ourselves with our peers? And aren't we afraid to do things and go into things, into places because of our peers? Well, your peers will try to keep you from getting uh, it all by saying things like, how stupid. Or, have you heard what the kids are saying now? Are we having fun yet? Have you heard that one? You know, you go out and take the kids on this big activity and spend all this money and work to give them this big thing in the middle of it. They go, are we having fun yet? I guess that's supposed to mean I've seen everything and this isn't as great as I thought it was going to be. I, 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 we've got a, I, I saw a girl at our school that said, I'm having fun now. And I thought, that is really great. I'm having fun now. And it doesn't mean just fun. It might be in our, our work. It might be studying or whatever. But she was having fun now. Or here's what a lot, sometimes a 10th grader will say about a 9th grader, she's just immature. That is one of the ultimate put downs. Let me tell you, folks, there's not a person in here who isn't Im immature in some area. We're every one of us two-year-olds in some area in our life. So, uh, I mean, when we start talking about people being immature, where are you immature? Or, uh, here's what, uh, how boring. What a drag. You know, and, and we'll even say, we, we Christian women will even say, I'm bored. And, uh, uh, you know, how in the world, you know, that, that's not the abundant life speaking. And he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, sometimes people try to straddle the boxes and, or skip the box altogether. Or they straddle and they're half over here and half over here. <laughs> and that's not, very, uh, that's not very nice looking and it's not very comfortable and it wor won't work. You pretty much have to take things one step at a time. So uh, if I, for instance, when I'm taking one step at a time and I'm getting everything I can out of a box, whether it's childhood, adolescence, or uh, midlife, or older years, or sickness, or grief, or whatever it is, I might try, now you're all women here, so I guess this is okay. I'm so glad there's a lady up there. Sometimes there's men up there, and I say, <gasps> oh, that. I, I, I can try to take two steps at a time, but do I look very comfortable? <laughs> No, not at all. Because I'm trying to take too much at one time. Everything we do, we might as well take it one step at a time. Because I, no matter how much you have to do, that's all that you can do is take one step at a time. Otherwise, it won't work. In fact, sometimes I just try to take a half a step once in a while. I just think I'm doing good if I just take a half a step. And, and then next, take one more step. And one more step, and it's so much, it's so much easier. Some of you say, I don't know what I'm going to do when I get home this weekend because I know that I know the cornflakes are going to be spilled all over the floor. I know there's not going to be toilet tissue on the roll. I know the uh, I know the sink's going to be full of dishes and there's not going to be any food in the in the refrigerator. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. I'll tell you if you handle it well. I'll tell you how you'll handle it, one step at a time. First, you'll just clean up the floor, and you, and, and and there's no use to go in saying I thought we had this worked out and you were and, and, and you know. And you've just been to a meeting of Christian women where you're supposed to learn how to talk to your family, you know. I mean, if you go home and find there's, there, uh, there's no towels up and everything's all, you know, there's no washing and all that kind of thing, you'll just start one step at a time. And don't instigate. And if your kids never have cleaned up their rooms, don't go home from this meeting and say, new regime, you've got a new mother, <laughs> new wife. You know, we're, we're, it's gonna, you know, start drilling them, okay, you do this, you do that. and they, Boy, they'll never want you to come to a women's meeting again. <laughs> Nor even on the good things. Don't go home and say to your husband, honey, you got a new eyes. And he says, yeah, it'll wear off in six days. Uh, you know, six months from now, maybe he'll say, did something happen to you at that meeting? Let him see it. Don't go announce it. Don't make any big announcements that you don't know whether you're, you're going to live up to or not. If you, and, and if you don't keep a clean house, maybe you ought to just start just with the freezer of the refrigerator. Just one little part. 
you know, uh, don't don't decide you're going to lose 50 pounds, gain 50, w win 50 souls, you know, and uh, I, and I don't know what all, you know, read the Bible through three times before Christmas. You're not going to do it. Make realistic goals and for your adolescents. Help them to set some realistic goals. But let them be who they are. Oh, I know sometimes they want to be an adult. So they don't know which they are. I know their hormones are going crazy. And I, but sometimes our hormones go crazy too. So we ought to understand. We don't know what we want to do. We don't want to be with somebody. And we don't want to be alone. We tell people we don't want them to come. When they don't come, we get mad because they don't come. We don't know what we do. Have you ever just, you, you just, you don't know what you want to do next. You don't know whether you want to get dressed or stay in your house coat. You don't know whether you want to go to the store or just, you, uh, or, or what you want to do. Well, they're that way too, see. And we'll just try to understand. Uh, I think we can uh, work with them so much better. When you empty the teenage box, you say, what now, Lord? Enjoy the adult box then. And guess what? You get to take the teenage box with you because you emptied it. Now, see, if you didn't empty it, if you didn't get your driver's license, your learner's permit, and your driver's license, and, your, uh, and, and all these things, and your high school diploma, then they're still back here in this box, and you can't take them with you. But if you get those, then you can take them with you over here, and you still have all those to help you with your adult life. Many of you wish so much that you had what's still back here in your adolescent box, and it can't come with you. you, are, it, you, you it's, it's too bad. It, it's, there, it's, you've blown it on that. But don't sit around feeling sorry about that. Let's say you didn't get your high school diploma over here. Then in, instead of saying, I didn't get my high school diploma, I didn't get my high school diploma, and over and over saying, I don't have a high school diploma, I don't have a high school diploma, how about going to uh, and find out what the GED is all about and get a book and start studying it and take the test once so you'll see what it's like and study the book that you can study and go get a, a, a GED, pass a GED, and any library can tell you about that doesn't cost much you say I could never pass it how do you know take the first step and go get the book you study go to the library how do you know you can't pass it and then you would be able to get into any other course that someday you might be want to get into I love to see people uh, even after they retire uh, Carol's dad's retiring uh, from being building engineer at University of Chicago for 34 years he's retiring this next uh, sometime this fall and uh, one of the first things he wants to do is take a course out at Hiles Anderson College I love to see people who want to live until they die a lot of people die before they stop breathing and you know and you'll always be young if you keep learning all the people who seem young are people who learn you see uh, the, uh, the young people even seem old who say I know you know like I've seen it all and they're not learning anything. And so, of course, you're going to seem old whether you are or not if you take that attitude and are not learning. A person who is teachable is young. Mrs. John R. Rice, who comes to our school, I told you, once a semester for a week, and she's with our girls. Uh, uh, sometimes Carol, t Carol lives with a bunch of the girls in the dormitory, and she'll take them out on a, a wiener roast or something. And Mrs. Rice says, I'm going out with the girls tonight. And I says, what are you going to do, Mrs. Rice? She says, I'm going to go pig out. You know, and she's just, she's such a lovely ga lady. Uh, uh, I mean, Miss John R. Rice is just somebody very, very special. But she's still learning. She's learning what teenagers like to do now. Not that she tries to be a teenager. She does and be silly uh, trying to be a teenager. But she just tries to relate to them. And in so doing, she seems very, very young, though she's 92 or 93 years old. Continue to learn. When, the empt uh, when, the, when you empty the box, you say, uh, okay, guess what? And you take the teenage box with you because you emptied it. Uh, I, Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell, who work at our school, were known by my husband and me way back years ago when we worked at Tennessee Temple University. Mr. Mitchell was 17 when he came to Tennessee Temple off the farm in Minnesota. I think he was the national future farmer of the America. He, they, he was an, on a big dairy farm a big, with his dad, a big uh, dairy farm. And he worked with us on our bus route and out in a rural area in Georgia. And Vicki Mitchell was the work scholarship secretary for my husband, and they fell in love, and they married my husband, performed the ceremony. And then, as I told you, she, had, she contracted uh, sarcoidosis. But, you know, they, uh, they didn't rush things over here. I remember when they were in college, they had good times. They, they did things with the other students. They dated other people before they found each other. They took everything out of the box. 
They got their, they, in their case, they got their college diploma. They went to a Christian college and got their college diploma. They did the things that you can do at that age that you can't do at any other age. So now that they're over here with four children and they have this sickness, they're, they're coping pretty well. They're handling it pretty well. Because they got all the things, they had taken all the things out of the teenage box. They had had so much fun and so forth, and now they don't get to do quite so many things. But they had emptied all that box. You don't know what you're going to have to have in life. You don't know what's going to ha happen to you in life. So take everything out. Empty the box. Have the abundant life. Get everything you're supposed to get as a child. Get everything you sh you're supposed to get as a teenager. And get everything you're supposed to get as a, a Christian lady. Now, sometimes uh, uh, over here in an adolescence, people take liberties with the flesh. And, in so, and, and, and some of them then have a baby some of them now decide to keep the baby some of the, and, and, and so they're 16 17 18 years old and they have a baby therefore they're forced to skip you know it's sad the whole thing is so sad but one of the saddest things I believe is not what we usually think about one of the saddest thing is 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 that they're forced to skip most of their teenage years and go on over here and they're not ready for it that's the saddest thing of the whole thing because she could get right this girl could get right with the Lord and be a wonderful Christian girl but still she'll never be able to get what she left back here when she took adult responsibilities too soon and therefore she's over here maybe married to someone because she felt she better marry the dad and she's over here married to someone she doesn't know and she isn't even grown up herself and that is almost the most sad thing of the whole situation that's why we cry out don't, don't, don't listen to the world when the world talks about it's okay to neck and kiss and don't listen just don't listen no one takes the steps all at once no one lost her purity overnight it was for, usually it's, uh, it's a first holding hands then it's necking then it's petting then it's, it goes on uh, uh, that's, that's, wh that's why you say make your, make your clothes modest girls not that they have to be dark blue and come down to here or up to here this has to be my dress for today uh not i don't mean that but, but that's why we're so careful about modest dress and ladylike dress anything that would stop th the sexual urge is very very uh strong and anything that could could keep that but it's of god if it's in marriage and any anything that could keep that slowed down let's do it for our kids let's help them not to be pushed on over into the adult box before they're ready. Then some of us get over here, and we're in the adult box, and we decide, I'm an adult now, and I have to be proper at all times. And I'm not ever going to do anything that I did as a child or an adolescent. People, what's wrong if there's a rainstorm and you want to go out in the rainstorm and play in the rainstorm? You know, if there's not hail or lightning, what's wrong in doing that just because you're an adult? Not a thing. Didn't you like to do it when you were a kid? Didn't you love to take your shoes and socks off and feel the mud between your, the toes? Didn't you love to feel grass, you know, go like this and feel the grass on your bare feet? Uh, you know, now, if you were drinking or smoking, uh, you know, in a restaurant and acting a fool because you were drunk and smoking and all, no one would think a thing about it. But if you're not drinking, you're supposed to act very proper all the time. I think in a lot of cases, Christians are sick of being Christians because they left their fun behind they're Christian now they can't have fun Christians are the only ones who are supposed to be able to have fun we shouldn't apologize by saying now Lord bless this party it's a good clean wholesome party we're having good clean wholesome fun and even Christians can have fun only Christians can have fun and clean wholesome fun is the only, is the only thing that is fun there, anything else is not fun at least, try, at least marks on you and scars all of us have had things happen to us in our life, I'm sure, that we wish hadn't happened because it left scars on us. Any fun. Oh, I can remember trying to smoke a cigarette when I was in the seventh grade. I'd have, I think I would have smoked if I could have ever gotten the hang of it, but I am so uncoordinated I couldn't get it. You know, my, my dad, we had a restaurant, and, I, and my dad was gone, and I took a pack of cigarettes out of the candy case and went back to the storeroom, and I saw how nice people looked with them. You know, I thought women looked real sharp, you know, with them, and I just didn't get the hang of it at all. I didn't, I, I didn't look sharp. I, I couldn't inhale. I didn't, I couldn't inhale. I didn't know what you did with it. You know, I didn't know what to do with the thing. 
if I'd have been smart enough, I probably, you know, I probably would have smoked. I was too dumb to learn how. But now I'm kind of glad I was too dumb to learn how. And I wish I hadn't even touched that thing to my lips. Then I could say I had never touched a cigarette to my lips. I can't say that. I, as far, stay as far away as you possibly can from anything that's impure or will cause you to be impure. But people do anything that is not against the Bible, illegal, immor immoral, or fattening. Well, you know, we'll go to a, we'll go to a restaurant, a fancy restaurant. And I, the Lord's let me go to a lot of them, or the devil, or somebody. Uh, but anyway, uh, anyway, we'll go to a fancy restaurant, and uh, I don't spill on my lap. Everybody puts napkins on your lap, and that's okay to put a napkin on your lap. But I spill up here. And so I tuck a napkin up here so my dress won't be all a mess. Now, is that napkin up here illegal? The police have never come to get me about it. Is it immoral? It's never led me to any impure thought or anything like that. Is it against the Bible in any way? Is it? You act like maybe it is. Tell me the verse. <laughs> I mean, even the verse that might suggest that. It, 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 people, manners are common sense, and common sense is save your dress where you spill. So I go ahead and put the napkin in, and, and not too many people stare at me or anything. We're, you know, we're all hung up tight about things that aren't anything. Why aren't we more upset about the gossip we say at the luncheon table than the napkin at the, at the neck? Why aren't we? The devil's got us messed up. That's why. You know why I haven't worn a napkin at the neck until about the last year when I realized, hey, my clothes are going to pieces. You know, you know why I haven't worn a napkin at my neck? Because a woman who's been dead a long time, has, and, and she intimidated me about a napkin at my deck and that's Emily Post and she's been dead a long time and I still put that napkin around my neck it's just like a, do some of you still not take the tags off of the sofa cushions or the sofas or the mattresses I didn't know until about eight or ten years ago I saw in good housekeeping that it was okay to tear them off is and now they say for retailers that's just the retailers. We always in our house, my mom always carefully left all those tags on. And we'd have nice sofa pillows on the sofa and tags sticking out about that long. Do not remove under penalty of law. And man, I wasn't going to remove them, I'll tell you that. And when we lived in Blue Springs, Nebraska, there's about 500 people there and there was only one cop there. And I thought, I used to wonder, how would he catch me if I took that off? But I still didn't take it off. And then we, and then we moved to a bigger town of Wymore, and they had two policemen. And I, I, but it was a bigger town. I still, but you know, when I felt real wicked, I'd go in and tear off a mattress tag. <laughs> now, that's not the most wicked thing I've ever done. But, I mean, that is, when I felt wicked, that is one thing I did. You know, we've got, we're so mixed up. We're so messed up, you know. I, I mean, to think that that could get across all over the nation, women bel have believed that. How many of you are with me at some time in your life, you believed that you couldn't take those things off? I mean, we're, we're so tied up with, with what somebody gets across like that or with what Emily Post got across, and she's dead. Now, I believe in manners. I, I can use them if, I'm hard, if I have to. I believe in them, but I, only if they're common sense. And it's not common sense to put your napkin on your lap if you spill here, is it? And who is it going to hurt for me to have my napkin tucked in here? So I do it. And, and you know what? A bibs, if I were senile, they'd give me a bib. <laughs> Why wait until I'm senile? Or if I had a stroke, they'd give me a bib. Or if, if, or if I ordered spaghetti or ribs, they'd give me a bib. So why can't I have a bib now? I'm going to go ahead and have... People, go ahead and do things. I, there's a lot of things we shouldn't be doing that we are doing. And there's a lot of things that we shouldn't... I'm getting mixed up. You, got the, you get the point, don't you? There's a lot of things we should do that we, we wouldn't do for anything. I mean, some of you say, oh, I just couldn't take my shoes off. <gasps> That'd be, you know, I went to a, a, an inner courtyard program by myself last summer at our college, the inner courtyard. And a little girl sat in front of me, the Carpenters little girl, for you who know the Carpenters. Uh, that isn't the rock group. That is uh, some people who work at our college. And uh, this little girl, uh, 
sat in front of me and she and she was having the best time and she was chewing gum and and it was an in, it was an informal program out under the stars you know and she was doing like this with bare, her feet you know against the grass and uh, when she when the piano started doing something she went clear over like this to see him and I thought boy that kid's having more fun than I am I'm gonna get her back here I'm gonna do exactly what she does and I said honey come back here and she uh, uh, she was with her older brother sister I said I want her to sit with me a little while and they said that's okay they thought it's gonna be a good example to her shape her up I guess and instead, I was trying to learn from her, you know. And so whatever she did, I did, but she didn't. I don't think she knew what I was doing. You know, it was dark, you know, and I, so I got my shoes off. And boy, that grass felt good against my, even with my hose on, against my feet, you know. I, I thought, why didn't I do that before? Because we're intimidated. Why aren't we intimidated about what God says not to do? And quit worrying about little things like uh, enjoying ourselves. You know, and, and, you know, if somebody laughs real loud in a restaurant, people go, Oh, they're just so... Now, I know you shouldn't go on in and make a real nuisance of yourself. And I always check around in the room and ask the people, are we bothering them, you know? Uh, be, <laughs> you know, but if you want to sit and laugh, you, if we were drunk, they'd, let, they'd say, well, they're just drunk. <laughs> well, I just happen to be drunk all the time. <laughs> and we're drunk, as the Bible says, on the wine of mourning. We're, uh, with the Holy Spirit, we don't have to have liquor to make us have a happy and good time and a lot of fun. And, and there's so many fun things you can do. I can't believe it. I asked my son-in-law when he was home this summer, I said, do you think there's, I, I love trees. And I, but I'd, lo I'd ro lot rather be up in one than under. But I've gotten a little big for one. And, and I don't have a tree big enough, you know, to get in one. I used to climb them all the time. I said, could you, I said, now don't say, don't, don't laugh or anything, but could you, see a tree do you see a tree where you could make me a tree house that I could really get up the steps okay not you know and get up there and sit up in the tree and he's <laughs> I, I knew he's saying my mother-in-law has lost you know she's lost her marble she's lost it all you know and, and and he looked around and tried to figure out and he said I just don't think we're going to be able to get a tree house up there and Carol said she has some carpenters out in the activities department that she thought though are going to be able to put a tree house up there would there be anything wrong? folks seriously I love to, to be, a, 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 what would be wrong for me to, to take my Bible and go up and, and, you know, have something up like that in a tree and me go up and sit in a tree house? I can hardly say it without laughing, but really I don't know why I would really love it. I grew up in a tree. My mom always... <laughs> my mom always found me in some tree or another. You know, and what would be so wrong with me if I got on a pair of nice culottes that looked like a skirt in the front and the back, and I climbed up a tree if they could get, you know, fix something that was heavy enough to hold me, and I got up in a tree and was away from everybody and everything, and don't you go, have you ever gone to Disneyland or Disney World and gone up into their treehouse? Well, if you can do it at Disney World, why can't you do it in your own backyard? People, we can have a lot of fun. Let's, let's, you, let's have the abundant life. Let's really decide now, is what I want to do, is it against the Bible or isn't it? If it's against the Bible, drop it. If it's not, do it. Enjoy yourself. Empty the box. Do everything that a Christian is able to do. For, and, 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 be, and, and do, be everything you can for the Lord. We need to be, we need to be having fun. We need, need to have many, many vacations. Uh, that Greek doctor that Carol was talking about at Mayo Clinic, said, she, he said, now what do, you do, what, what do you do for vacations or something? He said, I have, min, many vac I, have, I have many vacations. And he said, did you say many vacations or, she, or many? Both. Many, many vacations. <laughs> I mean, they can last two minutes or they can last two hours. The other day I had an exceptionally long day for me. I don't ever put in this many hours. And there were just different things that caused me to put in the hours from 5 till that night, about 10 or 11 o'clock. And uh, I didn't really feel like I wanted a nap, but I did need some kind of a break. And I went out and for two hours and riding in the, in the sand dunes there in Indiana and seeing the trees change. And it, I didn't feel like I had a long day because I took a mini vacation. In that case, a two-hour one. But some of you with little children, maybe you're just going to have to take very short ones. Uh, Two-minute ones sometimes. But boy, just looking at a red bird out the window gives you a real lift. It gives you a real change of spirit. Empty the box. Empty the box and help your children, your adolescents, your grandchildren, empty their box. Have the abundant life.